This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. As you all may know, I absolutely love hacking gadgets, especially GPIO add-on boards for the Flipper Zero. Now, a lot of the devices that I've shown you before are things like an ESP32, which adds things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, or a CC1101, like this guy right here, which is gonna extend the range of our sub gigahertz frequencies. What I've got for you today is actually something kind of different. Up until now, basically the Flipper Zero has been the powerhouse and the star of the show, but today that changes. Introducing the Flipper black hat this crazy looking device is by rootkit labs and it's actually an entire linux computer that the flipper zero is going to power now we've covered some absolutely mad lad devices before but this might be the mad laddiest uh -huh. This thing's crazy. Basically, the Black Hat combines a Flipper Zero and a Wi-Fi Pineapple. This one was actually given to me by Peaks from Hack5. Thanks, Peaks. Today, I'm quickly going to go through the process of setting up the Flipper Black Hat and show you some of the really cool penetration tests it can do. Man, this thing is just way too cool. Let's get at it. So first of all, I guess the question is, what is the Flipper Black Hat? Well, the Flipper Black Hat has a 1.2 gigahertz SOC or a system on a chip and 512 megs of RAM, and it's capable of running Linux. That processor basically makes the Flipper Zero's uh, ARM Cortex M4 32-bit 64 megahertz processor look like a toy. Yes, I had to read that off a script. I could not remember that line. I am sorry. Plus, this thing's got not one, but two USB-A ports on it. Right now, I've got a Wi-Fi dongle plugged into it, so it can kind of act as a man in the middle. This thing is so cool. He even went ahead and actually put a USB-C port on the side here, so you can run this as a standalone device. But actually, that's not all. It's even actually got a ribbon cable connector right there that you can connect a 480 by 480 screen. I told you, it is absolutely crazy. This thing's a Flipper Zero add-on board. It's more like the Flipper Zero is an add-on to the Black Hat. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually show you how to set this thing up on Windows. Rootkit Labs actually has some really good videos on how to set up the Black Hat, but he's a software dev, so of course, he runes Linux. Since I'm just a Windows pleb, I figured I'd make a quick tutorial just for the rest of us muggles. So the first thing we're gonna do is get ourselves a high quality SD card. SanDisk makes a great SD card. Anything you get from Rabbit Labs or from AWOC Dynamics, those will all work great too. Just don't get some trash SD card off of like AliExpress. Half the time those are fake or they're the wrong size. They'll say it's a one terabyte SD card and it's just like an eight gig with like some formatting issues. Don't even bother with that stuff. It totally wastes your time. So we'll go ahead and just take our SD card, plug it into our SD card adapter, and then plug this sucker into our PC. But not before this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, manufacturing, and so much more. You need 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, they've got you covered. They have engineers along the way that will help you in every single step. It couldn't be easier. Plus, the module store is full of all sorts of cool stuff like screens or tools. Literally anything you need, PCBWay's got it for you. Thank you so much, PCBWay, for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's head on over to the desktop and show you how this all works. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hop on over to 07 Machine Hub's GitHub, and then make sure to give him a star. This is an absolutely awesome project, and you know, it's the least we can do, right? Now, he actually doesn't do releases like a lot of other projects, so you notice the releases is empty, so we'll scroll down here. We're gonna go to the OS, because we want the operating system that we're installing right now. We're gonna scroll down here to where it says Nightly Builds, click there, and then then we can get our file. Now, one thing to note is this may change over time. I have people making comments on my videos from like a year ago being like, oh, well, there's releases now or this or that. Anytime you see something that's maybe not exactly the same, take a look at the date stamp just to know kind of where we're at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the latest version. I'm gonna pull master, you can pull dev, doesn't really matter either way, but I'll go to master and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, scroll, scroll, and then we have our push here. Don't worry about the build error, whatever this is, that doesn't mean anything, doesn't hurt anything. So we're gonna go to download push and we're just gonna drop this directly on my desktop. Go into desktop and then save. Easy, easy. Okay, so from here, we'll just minimize this, and then we want to extract. So let's go to extract all, drop it right on the desktop, and now we're gonna have our items that we're gonna put onto our SD card. So if we open that up, of course, opens in the wrong window. Then we have the SD card image, perfect. So now we need a way to put the image onto our SD card, but that's easy too. All we gotta do is 
open up win32discimager.org. This is a perfect application for this, and you can just download and install it there. Of course, I've already got it because, you know, that's how we do. So let's open it up, win. 32 disk imager. We're going to click yes when the window pops up. Now I just put the SD card in and I've messed around with this card before. I've used it for other things. So what I'm going to actually do is go into disk management, scroll all the way down and see what it looks like because I've used this again before. So notice it's kind of an ugly setup. There's partitions in here. We've got unallocated stuff. We're going to go ahead and just clean everything up. So delete this. Yes. It's going to take a second. I'm going to delete this partition, delete volume. Yes. Now we've got some unallocated space. I'm going to go ahead and just make a new simple volume. This is going to get overwritten. None of this matters, but we'll just do this to keep it nice. I'm going to change it to X fat next finish and then cool. Awesome. You probably don't need to do this, but I just like doing it anyway to make sure I'm starting with a clean file. So we're going to go ahead and select our image. So we're going to go here, going to do 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 desktop uh, push. Here's my SD card image. The device is L, triple check to make sure that's right. You don't wanna overwrite anything. New volume L, perfect. And then we're gonna click write. Writing to a physical drive can corrupt the drives. Cool, let's do it. <laughs> and this only takes a few seconds, so just take your time. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah. All right, so now we have a write successful, perfect, and in classic Windows, it's gonna say, you need to format the disk drive in drive L. That's just because it's formatted in a way that Windows doesn't like. Shut up, Windows, I don't care, whatever, go away. So, awesome, let's close our other folders. So this is our SD card right now. So what we're gonna do is actually open Notepad, because we want to edit one of these files. Right here, we have blackhat.conf. This we wanna edit because the first part right here, it says name the SSID you wanna connect to. So that's gonna be your Wi-Fi. And then you're going to put your password in it. All right. So you can also change the SSID for any access points you want to create with the Flipper Zero Black Hat. So right now it's called Flipper Wi-Fi. Just for fun, let's call it Flipper Squatch Fi. Q U A C H. Flipper Squatch Fi. Cool. Why not? Save that. Now there is an integration with Telegram. I'm not going to go into that today. Maybe in the next video. But that's where you put your Telegram bot or you know chat ID. No problem there. We're going to save and close this. Now our SD card is pretty much done. All right. So now we're actually going to go ahead and take our SD card and then plug it into the Black Hat. Let's push it into the top right here. And this has one of the really nice like springy um, SD card slots, so it kind of clicks in. Very very cool. And then we're going to fire up our UART bridge on our Flipper Zero. Now, I can't show you this on QFlipper because if I open up UART bridge, it's just gonna take the screen off, so it doesn't matter. Let me grab my, my cable right here, gonna plug that in, and we're just gonna go and go to GPIO, and then we're gonna go to USB UART bridge, and then all we're gonna do is click on the left-hand button because we want to change the baud rate to 115200. So 115200, click back. And now we're gonna be able to use an application like Putty to get into it. Now, if you don't know how to use Putty, just download Putty on Google. I, tr You can use Google, I trust you. So just do that. I, of course, already have it. So let's open up Putty. And then this is gonna be Serial. Now, one of the things it says on the Flipper Zero screen itself, it's on COM0. It's not on COM0, that's a lie. What we're actually gonna do is right click and go into Device Manager because over here, you're gonna see COM ports. I'm on COM12. So definitely make sure you know your COM ports. So there we go, COM12. And then it's on 11.5200 and then open. Now, make sure you have the UART bridge open on your flipper before you do this. Otherwise, it's going to get things screwed up. Trust me, don't worry about it. And then if you see a screen that looks just like this, you're ready to go. But we'll go ahead and plug in our board. There we go. Looking good, looking good. Everything's running properly. Put it down carefully. And in a few seconds, we'll know that things started properly because the green light on the uh, black hat will light up. Okay, cool. Starting cron and GPSD, good. And then again, the green light... Everything's good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this so we can see what we're doing. All right, cool. So this is just a Linux terminal. So if we do LS right now, we can see that we're inside the file structure. If we wanna see what's on our SD card that we could see in Windows, all we have to do is go to LS slash uh, MNT slash, and there's all our files that we could see in Windows. So everything's set up perfectly. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna get hooked up to the internet to make sure everything's working well before we hook it up to the Flipper Zero. So 
what we have to do is actually BH is the black hat command. So we'll just type in BH. So we have everything set up properly in our black hat config file that we did earlier. All we have to do is BH Wi Fi connect LAN zero. Oh, WLAN zero, WLAN zero. Because remember, we have two LAN cards in there right now for fun stuff. LAN zero is going to be the default one. So we're going to do that. And do, 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 cool, cool, cool. And if we wait a few more seconds, this should do that, which means we're connected. So that's fantastic. From there, actually, what we can do is see if we have an IP address. So all we have to do is do IP space A. And we have, do we have an IP address yet? All right, nope, not yet. So let's wait another second, IP A. And now we have our IP address. How do we know it works? We're gonna ping Google, ping google.com. And here we go. We can actually access the internet with our flipper zero. We're on our way. So control to C to stop. And yeah, that's basically like the checks and balances and making sure this all works here. So awesome. So let's clear this. And then let's take a look at what else we can do with our black hat. So BH. So you'll see we have our Wi-Fi set up and all that good stuff. We're already connected to Wi-Fi, so we know that works. So we can see some of the penetration testing things we can do on here as well. But we can run these on the Flipper Zero, which is way more fun. But I, I'll talk about them because you can see them right here. So we have an evil twin. So what the evil twin does is it actually impersonates an access point nearby and then tries to get someone to log into that. And then we can actually pass pretty much all of our data directly through our Flipper or the Black Hat for that matter, which means that anything that's entered in there, we have access to. So so we can read anything so kind of a man in the middle very much fun then we have evil portal which we can actually show later on which basically it's a free free wi-fi that you're going to log into and it's going to ask you to log in so you can get to the free wi-fi never enter credentials into free wi-fi kids never do it because yeah it's just way too easy for somebody to steal your credentials that way it is the most basic thing ever, just never enter your credentials into a free Wi-Fi. So then we have Kismet. Kismet's actually really cool. It's actually a network monitor. It can sniff packets, it can detect intrusions, and it does all of these things passively just hanging out. It doesn't send any of its own packets out, so it's pretty much undetectable. It's very, very cool. It's basically just an invisible watch guard for your network. So now we know everything's working perfectly through Putty. We can go ahead and hop on a Qflipper and actually use the companion app because that's even cooler. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to disconnect the board, which is probably going to crash Putty. Oh, no, it's not cool. But I'm going to back out of UART, which is probably going to crash Putty. There it goes. And now we just have our normal Flipper Zero CLI, but we don't need this anymore. We'll go ahead and close out of that and just pull up. I'm going to pull up Qflipper. Do, do, do. Here we go. And with any luck, this all connects. No problem right there. So I actually went ahead and just updated to the latest dev version of Momentum Custom Firmware because they have the latest companion app for the Black Hat. So we're going to need that. So what we're going to do is going to go over here and I can plug my Black Hat back in. Bam, bam. Here we go. And then we're going to go over to Applications. We're going to go down to GPIO. And it should be right up here underneath these guys. And we have the Flipper Black Hat. Fantastic. So cool. The first thing we can do is just test to see if it's working. So if we click shell. Oops. You can't really see it, but right there, see that? That's the SD card. I accidentally unplugged the SD card because I'm a freaking idiot. So now nothing works. So let's quit the application. Let's clip that back in. I'm actually going to pull the card out, put it back in. There we go. That should make it work. We're going to wait a few seconds until the green light turns on, which should be just a few seconds. Do, do, do. Green light. Cool. Um, Flipper Zero Black Hat. Now if we go to Shell, it's going to run Who Am I? And it's going to return Root because I am Roots, not Groot, although that'd be fun. So you can see all of the stuff that's in here right now. So if we scan for scripts, there's a folder that you can put scripts into. There's a few scripts on here, which are kind of cool. The Black Hat Scan, which I think just scans everything that comes through it. You've got a data loader and a data thief. Basically, the data loader will take any information that the Black Hat has in the SD card. It'll dump it to a USB drive. And then the data thief is just the opposite of that. Hello.py is just hello world, I believe. You've got a port scanner, which scans for open ports on a network. All right, so what we're going to do from here, actually, is we're just going to go ahead and straight up run an evil portal so we can see what that looks like. So all we actually have to do is scroll down to um, start evil portal. Boom. And this click start. So any luck, that's going to go through and try not to disconnect anything. It's going to give itself an IP address that we'll see in just a second. Then I'll pull out the phone of science. All right, cool. It's running. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's start recording on the phone. Cool. What we're going to do from here is we're just going to go to our Wi-Fi 
And then we're going to go down here. We should see Flipper Squatch Fi. Cool. We're going to connect to that. And good, good. It's going to open up immediately to our captive portal right here. If we zoom in, it's called the Flipper Evil Portal Demo. Now, if we enter in a user, which is anything we want. Um, there we go. And our password is... Uh-huh. Cool. And if we click Get Hacked, we can see on our screen right now. I don't know why I'm pointing. But that information, boom, you can see my password. So this is why, again, you never, ever, ever want to enter your credentials into free Wi-Fi. Also, of course, only test your own hardware. These things are great learning tools. We learn how people get hacked and how we can make ourselves not get hacked. But only test your own hardware or hardware that you've been given specific permission to you. Yeah, and so that's basically how the evil portal works. So we'll back out of this. Let's stop that and cool stops awesome and then just to see if everything's still working go ahead go ahead and test by pinging google and there we go we can ping google just like we could before fantastic and in case you need to reboot the device go ahead and click reboot and then you can see all the cool stuff it does in the boot system and there we can see our starting ntp cron and gpsd again so we know everything's working properly so yeah that's a quick overview of the flipper black hat now the cool thing about this project is that the flipper black hat itself has a tremendous amount of potential just remember we were talking about how much hardware this thing actually has it can do a lot more than what it does right now so in the future i know we're going to see more and more scripts more and more features on this thing. There's also a ton of devs who have a lot of interest in the project because of just how powerful it is. I mean, keep in mind, there are two USB on here you can plug into, so you can add so much GPIO, it's absolutely nuts. I am absolutely going to be doing another video on the Flipper Black Hat when there's more stuff out for it. Are there any other devices you want to see me check out? Leave a comment down below. As always, if you've watched this far into the video, you guys are absolutely awesome. Please make sure to like, subscribe, squash that like button. We'll catch you next time.